What's up, man? Hey, Rick, good to see you. Good to see you, John. Appreciate hey, it. Man, uh, I'm, I'm with uh, Rick Beata right now, and he's in his studio outside of Atlanta. Man, I can't thank you enough for letting us into your, your lair. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Pleasure. God, this is, you are heavily armed. I have a couple armed. amps. Yeah. I got a couple amps, got a few guitars. <laughs> yeah, heavily armed. I wish we might have to try to do like a pan shot where you can see it all. It's, it's, it's really beautiful, man. You can get it done here. So you could track full bands right here. I have tracked hundreds of projects here. I, I, don't, I don't produce records anymore since I do my YouTube channel full time now, yeah. but uh, I've done so many records. I've got another, I don't know, 10 drum sets over there and God. I got uh, plenty plenty of gear. God, and it, it just, and it sounds good in here, feels good in here. That's great. And this guitar, I've seen you play a lot. This has got to be your number one. I love this guitar. It didn't used to be my number one, but I restrung this with eights God. as an experiment. Um, I just watched that. I watched a video about this, about um, string gauges, and it was really interesting. Yeah, I think that the whole, you know, bigger is better thing is just, right. that's, I mean, that, nobody ever talked about that one. I started playing guitar in the 70s. And, yeah. And all my friends played eights. We all played eights. Huh. And then I switched to tens, and then I switched to elevens, and, you know. Stevie Ray Vaughan made everybody do that. That's right. Everybody, yeah. Everybody had to go heavy because Stevie, because that sound, but that sound was Stevie. You know? so, so I had changed to eights, and I was doing an, uh, a thing with Dave Friedman. I was talking to him for a, for a podcast, and... I was talking about using a tube screamer in front of the amp because I did a lot of low tune metal bands. Uh, and I would put a tube screamer or any type of distortion, a boss overdrive pedal, uh, in front of the amp to, to high pass the guitar to make the bottom end tighten up when it's really distorted. Yeah. And Dave Friedman said to me, you know, that strings, thinner strings, will do the same thing because they have less bass. And I thought about it. He goes, I said, that's why Billy Gibbons used eights. And I mean, right. all the guys in the old days used eights. Yeah. I mean, fusion guys like Holdsworth used eights. Every, you know, a lot of people did. Yeah. And Eddie Van Halen used nine through, 40, nine through 40 Fender Bullets, but tuned down a half step. Right. And, uh, but the less mass there is, the less low end, the tighter the sound is. And that video is kind of uh, not quite, I mean, the, the point of the video is that for a tighter sound, yeah. the thinner gauge works. Yeah. So, and I had switched to eights on this guitar. I don't have eights on every guitar, but I, this guitar just plays incredibly well with eights on it. Huh. So, um, what uh, brand of strings are you using? These are uh, Ernie Ball, um, the Super Slinky eights. Okay. But I use I use Dario's. I, yeah. I, I use different strings on different guitars. I'm not endorsed by any string company or anything. Sure. I buy my strings like everybody else at yeah. the music store. You find the ones you Maybe like. Maybe not everybody else, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this guitar. This is a. I bought this off the rack at Guitar Center probably about 15 years ago or so, 20 huh. years ago, something like that. I, they had a bunch of them in, I played it and it played great. It just had such a good neck on it. And the thing that I like about these juniors or specials or whatever they're called, double cutaways, is that the end of the fingerboard is where the last fret is. So, and I play a lot up in this, in this area. Yeah. And um, it's just the easiest access. The only other guitar I have that you can do that on is my 65 SG. Right. That, that's really thin, but the, the way that the guitar is tapered on this side is easy to, you can get all the way up here so easily, as opposed to a bolt-on neck. If I play my telly or something, you, you get you get hung up there. Sure, yeah. So that's why I like this. And all stock? I like P90s. It's, all, it's pretty much all stock. Yeah, it's all stock. Yeah. These are P100s actually, not P90s. Oh really, so, okay, yeah. great. So the P100s are the, are they stacked? Is that it or? or? Uh, I'm not sure actually. Yeah. I. Uh, they're all good. <laughs> I asked Dave. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're stacked. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's great. Well, man, yeah, that that I have I have seen you with that guitar a lot. I don't it's... typically play the guitar up like this. I've been playing it like this lately, but uh, I mean, I normally play my guitar like most people do, like sure. this off this yeah. leg. But in, in, because of Instagram, uh, to fit the whole guitar in, I end up doing this because it's so weird when the guitar neck goes off the screen. Yeah, yeah. So I just I just started playing like this for yeah. Instagram posts. So it's yeah. kind of a new thing. It is. Isn't it funny how like a how something like Instagram, yeah. how the format can sort dictates of dictates how you dictates. play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like like it's now there's there's this whole new kind of art form of finding the one minute. 
arrangement. Yeah. You know, to make it an arrangement that pops in one minute. And there are people that are just, you know, masters of that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and, and hey, like like you, man, you're nailing it. So well, I try cool. to. I I do my morning warm up. I'll just play something and then go about my day. Yeah. So, um, but I try to warm up every day and do a one minute improv. I had a guitar teacher, Mick Goodrick, back when I was uh, in Boston in the '80s, and well, Mick you know, made Berkeley me do guy? that. Yeah, he was. Well, he was. He's at Berkeley he's, uh, now, but he was at New England, New England Conservatory then. Okay. I was getting my master's degree in jazz guitar then, and. Uh, and he, t he made me do a one minute improv every day, every morning when I woke up and then bring it in and play it for him. Huh, cool. So yeah. I kind of have kept that tradition going on. Yeah, that's cool. It's, uh, it, it is so cool that format Instagram that it gives you an opportunity to just like share a moment of yeah. art. Like, at, like, let's just go for it and see what happens. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's good. It's, it's, uh, I like Instagram. I try and post almost every day on it. and. And it's, uh, I think it's cool. It's it's really a guitar player's format too. Totally, totally. It's really for of all musicians in, or of all instruments, it's really for guitar players. It's perfect. Yeah. And this, I, I really think we're living in the golden age of guitars. There's never been more great gear. There's never yep. been more great players out there. And it's funny. There was this big, like a year ago. There's this thing about you know guitar being dead. Like you know, obviously they're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I I have, you know, 15 412 cabs, so I'm, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's a live here yeah. anyways. Yeah, starts live and well right yeah. here. Yeah. Well, very cool, man. Well, this, okay, this is number one. I want to see what, uh, let's look at some more of your... Another guitar that I play a lot in my videos that I love is the 65 SG. I bought this from my buddy Dave Honorado. <laughs> Any of you that yes. watch my channel have seen, Dave's been in, I don't know, 50 videos model, or so. Yes. Yeah. Dave does, not only is a phenomenal guitar player, but he does all the work for every guitar player in Atlanta. Oh, that's great. And uh, he sold me this guitar. It was his guitar, right, Dave? Yeah, it was a, a, a 65. It's all, basically it's all stock, except it's had a stock tailpiece added to it, um, and the cover's taken off the pickups. And the tailpiece is way back, and, yeah, further than normal. And, that's cool. And it's 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 strange because it, it really, I think it makes that guitar sound the way it does. It's, um, it's kind of like how Larry Carlton put, where he put the stop on his 335 oh, really? is farther back than where it probably should be. Huh. And the longer the space behind the bridge, the more harmonics, the more overtones it seems to get. Because that guitar, I mean, he picked it up right off the bat. I didn't even say anything. I said, you just need to play this guitar. And you were like, instantly were like, why it's, is this just like, It's yeah. so easy to play too. The, yeah. the, uh, the, it's easy to get around on it. Once again, I can get up to the top of the, uh, of the guitar right to the last fret without right. touching the body. Oh yeah. So that's the thing that those two guitars have in common is that the body is uh, the the end of the guitar meets the body right there. So, and these would be the patent pickups, right? Yeah, those are patent number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what first? Basically, the second year of the patent number. So they're they're basically PAFs. I mean, there's you, not really a difference. That is the argument that everybody at Gibson swears there was no change, and yet you know, yeah. tone weirdos who say, oh no, totally a different thing. But well, yeah. I'll put it this way: that's the Clapton uh, SG Fool guitar. Yeah, that is the exact same year that he oh, wow. used his sixty-four, sixty-five. Is that, it's that's that's the. the same so record. I wanted to cover. I wanted to do something with this guitar because in my videos it doesn't show up very well because I usually wear dark, uh, dark shirts. And I said to Dave, "Can I put some pick covers on?" And he said, "No, it's going to totally change the sound." Which it will. It'll take the, some of the high end off that guitar. Yeah. So yeah. it sounds so good. It's like it, it's like because I, I tried doing it myself, and it's yeah. it's not the same guitar. Yeah. I get it, man. I just like covers. I know. No, I know. I, mean, I do too. I do too. It's an aesthetic thing. I get yeah. It. Yeah. I know, and it, yeah. it 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 for me, it's like okay, I get it. Might sound better, but you know, what if can it I takes say? a little top end off, I can put some more top end on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right, 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 exactly. Right. Well, anyway, it looks cool like that, and yeah. let's hear that bad boy. Yeah. This is a. Uh, um, once again, this is kind of it's really um, got a lot obviously more output than the uh, sure than the other guitar. <laughs> I think it's a um, um, 
this is really great for rhythm playing, for uh, it's very true all up the neck. Uh, the intonation is excellent on it, even though it really, I don't know, these are pretty old frets, aren't they? They look like original Those frets. Those are the original frets, yeah. 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 But they're, the they're in... I recrowned them. It's the third crowning, so after this, they're going to have to That's the last crowning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is... This is uh, <laughs> uh, but the evenness of this is just is just great, and the output... The, the guitar resonates really well, and, uh, and it just sounds incredible through amplifiers, through any amp. Man, I think you're onto something with having that stop back further. Yeah, it seems like the yeah. string tension on yeah. it is less too. Is that it possible, is. It, Dave? It yes, it, it's a little bit, just a little bit lighter. Yeah. And you're gonna get, I, I would imagine, almost some kind of overtones. Yeah, the synthetic with that. overtones from it, yeah. It's almost like, you know, like a, it's very similar to like a, a trapeze tailpiece on a, on a 335. Right, right. You know, and kind of what about the nylon um, saddles, yeah. Dave? What's that do? And that definitely takes off a little bit of the, the, the high end from like the brass saddles. Yeah. And so, uh, and that's another tone geek. Some guys love them, some guys hate them. Right. I, you know, I, that guitar, it's already got a lot of high end in it, so I actually like the nylon because it just takes just a little bit. I like bit the off. feel. I like the feel yeah. of it too because yeah. to me, it uh, uh, for vibrato, I think it. Um, there's a, I, I don't know. I I can sense the that there's a little bit of um, there's a real smoothness to it, especially yeah. when I play up high. It doesn't wow. it doesn't seem like there's as much tension on the strings. Right. I have a little bit heavier gauge on this. These are not eights, are they? Those are nines. These are nines. Yeah. yeah. So. Now you think about that. Okay, this is a 55-year-old guitar. Yep. Without a broken neck, there, there can't be many of those that no. made it this not long. player, not player ones. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I mean, most of the time when you see somebody, they put a stop on it and do mods to it. They're always broken. Yeah. You know? Because, because they got played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reality I always ask is. all my friends when they're saying they're selling their Gibsons, uh, has it got a broken headstock? That's the first thing I ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm always surprised when they don't. Right, right. It's yeah. almost miraculous. Yeah, so. Because, I mean, number one, rock and roll is a contact sport. Yeah, so, <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, things yeah. Are gonna yeah I'm surprised too, because I bang the headstock on here a few times, yeah. and uh, but I'm surprised that. that no, uh, that's, that's ha ha really, honestly, that was half the reason uh, why I could sell that guitar in good faith too because it was it wasn't broke you know yeah. and SGs oh, cool. once they're broke they're never right I've worked on so many of them and they're just super fragile guitars to begin with so if you you know <laughs> yeah. you drop them really good once and that's pretty much it yeah you know, even if you repair them right they're still and not Dave right. how much does this guitar weigh because it doesn't weigh oh, anything it's super six light. pounds probably, seven pounds yeah maybe it's under seven yeah yeah so it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's probably my lightest oh that's probably great. my yeah. lightest guitar yeah and I'll stipulate I wasn't the one who put the stop tailpiece on this. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. So it was already like that when I bought it. So now, if, if you watch my channel, the guitar that I play the most, or that I've played the most on my channel, is my uh, is my Dan Electro. This one here. Which this is one is such an odd choice. Yes. I've always so so I uh, <laughs> really I love this guitar. This is a U two. I, I think that's the model. Is that it, yeah. Dave? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know what? Can we plug that? Thing yeah. In? Yeah. Like that is. That's what I like about you. It's it's an it's odd choices like that, and that's a guitar that like. The reason I like this guitar is because if I play really complex chords, I have a lot of dissonance in them. It's really true sounding. It's got great intonation on it and really dissonant chords sound so clear because of the lipstick pickups. Oh. Right. So that's one of the reasons that I play this a lot. Because I typically only play it if I'm playing jazz oriented things or or more complex that sounds. Is the most unlikely jazz guitar, but it totally makes sense. Yeah, this is a really a great jazz guitar. Huh. Really a great jazz guitar. So, uh, John, um, I'm sorry, Steve Riddinger, Ridd Ridd Riddinger, who owns uh, Dan Electro, he, um, uh, they have, I have some newer Dan Electros, but I always play this one because, I don't know, I've had it for 25 years or something. Huh. I just, I love the, I love the sound of it. And, um, I think that the pickup placement, Dave, what do you think? That has something to do with the uh, oh, definitely, yeah. with the tone. Yeah, and, But it's and so even sounding. They're real even and they're really low output, so the guitar sounds really sweet, so no matter what you kind of put through it, it always sounds good. I only know? use it's, the rhythm pickup on this. Yeah, I only use the yeah. front pickup. Yeah. So. What uh, string gauge do you run on that? These are 10s. <laughs> so, 
No nine, other consistency so eights, here. Eights, eights, Not nines, getting tens. <laughs> yeah. This, Elevens, yeah. this guitar know. actually plays really well with tens on it. Yeah. And and when you want to when you play these complex chords, I never change the strings on this guitar ever. These strings have probably been on here three, four years. Oh, you need a tetanus shot before you. They, pick up I, that my guitar. hands never sweat, so they don't really. Look yeah, he really does not dirty up the strings. Yeah, my hands crazy. never yeah, ever so. sweat, so I can. Uh, it's I mean, it's just great for. It's great for cording. Um, yeah. Just so even. Yeah, get that even, definition. Even with a uh, with a. A guitar that cost one hundred and fifty dollars, I think, is probably how much it was when I bought it. Right. That it's so clear for. It's just great. Yeah, it's that's really, great. really even sounding. Yeah, and how cool that I mean that a guitar that is within reach of. Anybody. Anybody, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could be a kid mowing lawns for a day. Yeah. And really aggressively and find a guitar like that. Yeah. That's so, great. So I, you know, I remember seeing uh, they were the making of the Black Album by Metallica and on uh, Sad But True, which to me is the heaviest riff on that record, James Hetfield is playing, uh, Dan Electra <laughs> playing that riff. Really? Yeah. Through a Marshall or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So I figure oh. if James Hetfield can play a Dan Electro, I can play it. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, yeah. that is hard to imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cool thing about these guitars, too, is the radius is really flat on the neck, so you can really get the action low on those guitars. Huh. Is this They're, a 16? It's like a 15, 16, yeah. yeah. So it's you can really, really get them low. Well, they totally upgraded the bridge. The original yeah. Dan Electro bridges yeah. were just, I mean, that was the... The, yeah, you had the wood piece. The it was a little wood piece across. Yeah, the, yeah. not not adjustable. Terrible. You couldn't. Yeah, it was like, yeah, that's why Jimmy Page put a badass on his because yeah. he couldn't he couldn't keep yeah. it too. So yeah, so I love this guitar. Um, other than this guitar, this is another one that you'll see if you watch my channel for a long time. This um, I had this to you, Dave. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is my old go, Gibson. Um, uh, it's actually not a standard. It's actually a classic. It's classic. It yeah. used to be a what well, used to be a classic. Now it's a standard. Uh, this guitar I played on a million sessions. This used to be my number one for session playing. Um, are those Demarzio pickups? These are, are no. These are the uh, Mission PAFs. Mission PAFs. Yeah. See, I got it right. You Dave. did get it right. Yes. All right, Dave. Yeah. Uh, so I I had Dave take this and do a setup on it, and he gives it back to me, and it's got new pickups on it. And I'm like, dude, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I swapped out your pickups. Yeah, I was like, all right, just try it. I was like, you know, it's like, because he was always like, oh, this guitar sounds so great. And I was like, yeah, I think I got, I got a better Dave was like, it, it sounds so much better. Yeah. And then he just put the pickups on. He's, listen, you just if you don't like them, I'll switch them back to the yeah. other ones. And I played it. I was like, oh, these sound amazing. Yeah, so they're, I told they're, you. they're just a basic uh, mid-range uh, output PAF, hmm. uh, Alnico 5 Magnets. Um, Mission is the Mission company? Customs, yeah. Out I'm not, of the I've not heard Mission of Mission Viejo, that. it's a M MCI, it's a guy, Scott Sheldon, who um, he does a lot of, um, he does some, some original designs, he does some replica stuff, uh, but the pickups, he's, you know, they're really great pickups. I really like them because they're um, very, very, very true to the original PAF stuff. And I know everybody says that about yeah. a lot of pickups, but I've owned you know, thousands Dave, of Dave has owned thousands of guitars yeah, and amps, and anytime and I go to buy anything, I immediately get on the phone to him and say, okay, all right, take a screenshot of it, do this. I don't yeah. buy anything without asking him. Yeah. Actually, none of my friends buy anything without yeah, that's asking true. Dave. Yeah, that's true. Rat, everybody. Yeah. I think we all have a Dave. Yeah. yeah. No, my, my Dave is yeah. named Dave. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, they work at work at Cahoots. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, actually, between Greg Boros over at Gruens and my buddy yeah. Dave, yeah, 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 I, yeah, we've all got a Dave. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm responsible for half of this stuff being here. It's, it's yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, he so. used to work at music stores in town too, and and he was yeah. he sold me a, so many amplifiers, guitars, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pusher. Well, yeah, yeah, right. So right. I said to Dave, I was looking for an original SVT, and yeah. which I have up here. And yeah. old, this is 1968. Oh, first, first, first year, yeah. a SVT. true battle axe. A true yeah. battle axe, 92 yeah. pounds. Oh, yeah, 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 Massive yeah. transfer. That's a roadie yeah. rig. So, yeah. so Dave, yeah, one, didn't move. one day Dave calls me up and says, I found it. What? And he said, I found that SVT, the original one. 
and then he it had it shipped here, and I couldn't move the box. <laughs> it was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It, uh, That's happened a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could not move the box. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it doesn't really go anywhere, but stays up on top of the thing. Yeah, good, but, idea, uh, good idea. Yeah, but but if anytime I want to find anything, and anybody out there, if you have a. Uh, I'm looking for, I don't have my Model T, my Sun Model T amplifier no, here. It's, it's in the shop right, right now. now. It's yeah. getting repaired, but I'm yeah. looking for a 612 Sun cabinet. So. Okay, so in the comment section below, if you've yeah. got that 612. Let me know. God Early knows 70s. you don't need it. Yeah. You don't need it. Hey, <laughs> you don't need it. Early 70s. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for the it. The problem is, is how we get to ship it. Oh, but that's right. right. Yeah, oh. we'll figure that so out. So that's something I've been looking for for a long time. I want yeah. to do a video <laughs> on, uh, on Doom. Uh, guitar sounds that you know with mad amps and orange overdrives yeah. and model yeah. t's and yeah my beta leads all that you know isn't it funny how we hunt stuff like that i mean it's like my favorite thing to do god yeah yeah it's my favorite and yet i kind of hate myself for it i bought an amp yesterday and i'm like what am i doing <laughs> i don't need another vintage Fenders, Especially man. you, because you do demos all the time. So I know, it's like... <laughs> I yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't need it's a sickness. It's, it's more right. old right. shit to break. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there I am, crying as I give them my money. Yeah, right, oh my God. And then, they, then they, as you're leaving the store, we'll see you next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> they're thinking, God, get a girlfriend or wife right. or something, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's... I, There's I, worse thing you can do, know, you know? and I've done them. Yes, yeah, right, right. Trust right. me. <laughs> I used to hunt for pro audio gear. I have a studio. I mean, I in my control room, well, I, have a, I have a two-inch machine. I've got, uh, you know, right, and that's where you it really gets. Yeah, and when you get yeah. into microphones, microphones are way more expensive than guitars and, and cameras. You got that's where you cameras. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same Tom thing. Tom Brush, we just shot him, and man, he's a He's a camera nerd. Yeah, and he spends as much on cameras as guitars. Yeah, cameras well, actually, are cameras are way more expensive than guitars. So they're ex as expensive as as a really nice guitar, oh, this vintage guitar. God, yeah, and you can't play them. Yeah. And you can't play them. So well, anyway, this I love the 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 cream, the double cream made me think it was a uh, Demarzio because uh, for yeah, a while, that was that was that was, I I wanted to make it sort of the old Al Di look uh, to dude, it. Totally, yeah, that's what yeah, I, that's what yeah. I was thinking. And, so. And Larry was really smart. He he copyrighted the the double cream. Yeah, right. And Gibson, who originally made the double creams, couldn't make them because right. Larry really? had the copyright. Yeah, wow. wow. Yeah, another good Italian New York guy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there, yeah. There They're you smart. Go. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. guitar is uh, um, I've probably had this twenty some odd years as well. So I mean, most of the guitars I've had, I've had for a long time. There's one other one here that I this uh, Telly. You gotta People have will one. see me uh, play. Yeah, you gotta, gotta have, gotta have it, yeah. In my videos, and this this one is um, once well, again. This is this something I've bought. Full day, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you have no <laughs> more room. I'll so, pull it with me. I'll say if you want, but yeah, I don't, right. I don't know yeah. straps. But yeah. this, um, they're all out of tune just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I've made um, a career to play out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> this particular guitar is. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I've I've had it set up about one time or so. It just is. Uh, yeah, that guitar's a rock. This I, guitar's a rock. It never. Every couple of years, I got to crank the truss rod, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. and this yeah. is. Uh, I think there are tens on this. Too. Yeah, those are tens. Yeah, um, this has a very very even net. net it, it's really even everywhere on the neck. Easy to play, solos, uh, and for you know a lot a lot of. Um, Chords that have seconds in them and, and things like that. It's very true. It plays very in tune yeah, uh, they, for overdubs. Something about a telly really just cuts through a mix. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't have to be that ice picky sound. They yep. just find a place. Yeah. So I would do, you know, I have one of everything. Yeah. That's kind of my, my um, that's my thing is that, that I, at being a, having a studio doing records you always need oh this thing needs a telly or it needs a uh, a prs yeah or it needs a you know a strat whatever whatever it may be and i have one of everything yeah. with one, with different pickup configurations and we're looking around you've got a bit more than one of everything well yeah maybe <laughs> three, three of everything <laughs> yeah 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 that's that's yeah. great man so i th and the other thing that that people will see on my channel is this guitar this is my um this is honestly really my only acoustic guitar. This is a 1957 Gibson Country Western. Um, I've had some, the biggest video on my channel 
-hmm. is with this guitar, I did the top 20 acoustic guitar intros of all time. And, um, and you see in the comments section constantly, how did you mic that guitar? It sounds amazing. And, and there's no mic in the camera. There's a mic about five feet away. And that's what it is. But it's, it's, just all the about the, it's all about the instrument. Yeah. yeah. It's got a really even mid-range on it. I have a video coming out today that, uh, where we changed the gauge strings on it, did the same thing. Okay, let's talk strings. Where this is a, okay, so this is, these are 13s on it. I've always played 13s on this particular guitar because it had 13s when I, when I got it. I actually recorded on a record that was uh, mixed by Kevin Shirley who uh, Kevin does all Joe Bonamassa's records. And uh, Kevin heard this guitar and he said, that's the best sounding acoustic I ever heard on a recording. And I didn't own it at the time. The guy at the studio I recorded it had it. And uh, it's my buddy Jimmy. And I kept asking him, Jimmy, will you sell it? Will you sell it? And this went on for a couple of years. And finally yeah. one day he said, yes. Yeah. You and got him right at I got him. Yeah, he needed moment. the cash. And then, yeah. and I've uh, held on to it. And this is real really the only guitar i mean i like to have a martin sometime but yeah but, yeah. Uh, but this and that guitar, guitar is uh basically stock the only thing i've done to it i refretted it uh put a new nut on it um the gears are reissued gears but the rest of the guitar is real straight and original it's you know it's been played it's not like a closet classic by any means i mean it's it's seen and some, it, i think you know, it was refinished actually. yeah the top Jimmy, was the top yeah, was, the top was gibson yeah. actually refinished yeah. it oh really yeah, yeah. in and i think 91 it was yeah hmm. but uh it's in very, very good shape. I scratched the neck with a capo one time. It's got this, div Dave fixed it, but you can still see it. Yeah, I drop filled some lead on it, but. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you got to your capos, man. I mean, you know. I was so, so yeah. mad. I put, it wasn't a band doing it. I yeah, put it on did. myself. All by yourself. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, no. uh, but when I, I can see it there, but it's completely smooth. So. Well, you know it's your yeah. guitar by then. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, it's not like there's no scratches on it, but this this guitar is uh, um, records really well. It's got very even mid range because it's an old guitar. It's dried out, and um, well, and, and it's the, so balanced. The country western. It looks a lot like the J160. Looks a lot like the AJ, the Advanced Jumbo. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the difference is because they're all that bell shape like it's, that. It's it's mainly appointments. It's mainly you know bindings and inlays and that kind of thing. Some of the backs um, and the shoulders are a little different shape, but mainly it's mahogany, right, Dave? Yeah, Bruce. It's all oh, maybe that's the mahogany. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because I think the uh, the AJ is rosewood. And, yeah, some and of those rosewood, and then the I think they actually had one maple one, but that was actually the uh, a little bit later, but um, yeah. yeah. I think that the mid-range on these guitars, uh, they have a Cheryl Crow reissue that Gibson has. Right, Gibson yeah, has. that's right. She, hers is a 61. Oh, cool. Um, but I thought hers was more like dread naughty, but I, um, I... It's close, it's it's that body shape, but it's a, it might be just a tad wider at the okay. top. But that's, and it might be yeah. the color. Yeah, the color's different. Or yeah, I was just looking at Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who could not? She's a yeah, beautiful, right. talented woman. Yeah, well, Peter Stroud's got the greatest yeah. thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is, a, the, if you watch my channel or have heard any records I've produced, I've, and you hear acoustic guitar, it's pretty much this one. Okay, actually, I lied. I actually do have one more acoustic guitar. It's this 19, early 70s Guild Classical that I, it was my first guitar I ever got. I've, oh. I've had it since the mid-70s. How great. And, um... And there's a great story with this guitar. My, one of my students, her name was Teresa, married Christopher Parkin. He was one of the greatest classical guitarists of all time. Sure. And he came to this music store that I was working at when I first moved to Atlanta. Um, I was teaching lessons, that's where I taught her. He came there to meet me and he played this guitar for an hour and a half. With me. He gave me a concert from this far away, just me and him. Wow. And. Uh, yeah, so this is um, a really, really great. It's it's just a, um, you know, I've had it forever. It plays perfectly. So it's literally your first guitar. Yeah. Well, other than my Penco 12 string, yeah, uh, this was my, really my second guitar, but um, but it's uh, it stayed in good shape. I actually broke the neck on it, Dave. Did you ever notice this? Did yeah, I crack yeah, the yeah. neck. Mm -hmm. 
And <laughs> that's never, hard to miss. It's never, <laughs> it's yeah. never been repaired, and it's never gotten any worse. Really? Yeah, it's just sat there. Yeah. Yeah. I can, there's probably not a lot of tension on the neck, but it's. Um, oh yeah. Uh, but it's. I just love this guitar. It, it looks. I mean, that looks like a fatal wound, but apparently no big deal. Yeah. And I've played this on a million gigs. Solo oh, guitar, that's great, man. Solo guitar gigs. So. That's great. Well, okay, so that is a, uh, you can't see them all, but that is a small sample of the arsenal that he has here. And speaking of arsenals, look at behind us. You are a man of many amps. I like amps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah obviously. Okay, let's jump into these. Um, let's see here. Some of the old ones, like the, one of the most recent ones I got are the Park. That's a 1980 Park. God, that is clean. Yeah, that's an I know it's yeah. unbelievably clean. Dave found that one. Yeah, that one's real straight. Uh, it's a 1204. It's basically a JMP Marshall. It's it, it's a transition year. It's a transition year. It does. Um, it's got a little more gain than the, than the standard Marshall. Is yeah. that 100 watt? Uh, that one's a 50. 50. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a. That's a new high watt, which I think are great. The new high watts are excellent. Yeah. Um, that is a uh, um, JCM 2000 that for, from the first year '99, that was just completely retubed and had a, it, it through, failed yeah. in one of the videos we were making. Oh um, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, what is that? Perfect. Is that the JMP right there, Dave? Uh, the, uh, or the Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah, Jubilee. There's yeah. a Jubilee. With yeah. two matching cabs. Yeah, I have yeah a full it's hard stack. to see the cabinets behind it, but they're all matching. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then I have a '71 JMP back here. I think somewhere. Yeah. I have yeah. A, yeah, right. You got your V4. A, yeah, V4. Oh wow. Um, Wait, okay, what I what year is this? Uh, that's seventy four, I think. Something yeah, that's like, like early seventies. Yeah. My back hurts just. Yes, <laughs> this is this is very stout. That yeah. Cabinet on it. God. I try to get. I try to keep the uh, the cabinets. Um, the, the same cabinets. This orange overdrive over there. That has an interesting story. So I was um, making a record at at uh, NRG in LA back in nineteen ninety nine, and Stone Temple Pilots were making a record and. I heard them, they were tracking with Brendan O'Brien. They did all the records with him. And I heard this unbelievable guitar sound. Rob, Robert DeLeo, is it Robert? No, Dean? Robert, D Dean, Dean, guitar player. So Dean was playing and I said, God, I wish my guitar sounded like that. And when they were taking a break, I peeked my head in and he was playing through an, that amp, literally that amp. And oh. how I know it was that amp is that I, I bought it off Reverb and it was Brendan O'Brien's road case that had his name oh, on it. Oh, really? So oh, I, was, I found it on Reverb a couple years ago and said, that's the amp. Wow. Isn't that baffling when people sell their gear like that? Yeah, well, I guess if you're not making records and you, and you own 300 amps, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I or mean... 500 amps or whatever Brendan owns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. Those are, those are really... So the, you had the uh, orange OR120s back in the 70s, and then they made OR80s. And then they had the overdrives, which are the master volume versions of those amps, which had even more gain. And they have the most creamy mid-range. They're, oh. they're some of my favorite. Great amps. Yeah, they're some of my favorite amps ever made. So um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of old orange amps. Yeah. I've owned probably five orange overdrives and about 10 OR120s. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that one in particular is kind of a kind of an oddball. That was actually one of the early '90s. Um, first that was a reissue. Reissue. They, so they bought the. Uh, I think Gibson. Who, who Gibson distributed or, yeah. them, but it was Trace Elliott. Trace Elliott. In, yeah. in the yeah. Yeah, well, early '90s. Gibson bought Trace Elliott, and yes. yeah, they had. It and all. they they used a lot of the parts. They had the transformers yeah. and and a lot of the face plates from the original Orange Factory that they got. Right. So a lot of the early parts, ones yeah. were actually, you know, new old stock. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I remember doing a thing in Nashville that Gibson was sponsoring back in the 90s, and it was all orange backline. And it's the first time I saw one, and those weird hieroglyphics like, what does this mean? <laughs> what is this? Is this yeah. tone? Yeah, is right. this yeah. bass? Yeah. yeah, like yeah, a like, lightning bolt in a fist. This and, yeah, do? It was good. I know, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird hieroglyphics, yeah. yeah. But those particular series, um, uh, ZZ Top was using those during the, that period, and uh, I went to go see them, and I was working at a, a studio here in town called Triclops, that actually, where we kind of met originally in the early Dave 90s. Dave worked on the Siamese Dream record, oh, Whole cool. Live Through This. Yeah, wow. um, COC Deliverance, um, Swamp Ophelia by Indigo Girls, uh, Warren Haynes' first solo record. Um, oh, cool. So it was a great studio. We and we just it's had, a cool scene here. Yeah, right? it, yeah. It, it it reminds. It's kind of funny. It reminds me of Nashville in a lot of ways now. Yeah, it's kind of how it from was back here, then, from back then. From back then, yeah. 
and um, and actually one of our one and of the our, traffic is actually a lot yeah more exactly you guys got all of it right yeah, yeah. The expense everything yeah, yeah so. but uh, and it's funny because a lot of the people that we <laughs> were associating with at that time uh, like Dave Cobb and, and, and right. guys like that we're all old friends with those guys because they were here and they then were, they moved up there so right. it's, you know it's kind of cool so yeah um, but that series of orange really cool that they've got a lot more gain than the seventies versions and so you can actually run those at a more tame volume and not kill yourself with them and, and get Right. You know, so. Yeah, they can be pretty punishing. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I, so I, you know, the, this a lot of these amps have been modded. It's dual rectifiers, two channel has been modded. Um, that park is a Mitch Colby park, which is a killer sounding. Yeah. That's, so that's, what year would that be? What's that? The park? Yeah. That's new. That's yeah. right. That's from last year. That has KT eighty eights in it. I think is yeah. that right, Dave? That's a hundred oh. watt. Yeah. That's a hundred like watt. How they went with those retro chicken head. Yeah, knobs. that's uh, that's what they used in the late sixties on the original parks. Okay, that's yeah. what. Colby's really doing a great job of those. In fact, I, I've opened those amps up and they are spec on man i mean they he he so sources going, a lot of old parts oh, and, okay so yeah, going really, back to that he really does a great job when i went those, to the so. nam show last year not this past one but a year before i asked dave i said what should i look for and the only thing he said he goes go to park yeah and see mitch colby his new amps are amazing and i went before nam happened i went over to tim pierce's uh studio and tim uh, First thing he strummed his guitar, he's like, what are you playing through? And he had the park. He huh. said, I'm playing through this park. I said, oh, my God. Then he introduced me to Mitch, and yeah. then I, yeah. I bought that. Yeah, so. <laughs> that dude's got some amps, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, oh, Tim, oh, yeah. yeah. Tim's got a couple. Yeah. I was like, how many guitars do you have, Tim? Uh, I don't know, 300 maybe? I don't know. He didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know app. how many I have? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, have, I only have 30 maybe something like that yeah I, I can see more than 30 here maybe more than 30. <laughs> maybe 40 i can see i, I can see more than 30. more than five yeah yeah, yeah. right right yeah less yeah. than 100 more than five. i have about eight gibsons i think so yeah, yeah. not enough not yeah. enough so, i'm big look i'm big into amplifiers i uh I have, I, I'm not a, a purist. I have digital, you know, I've used, I have sure. XFX3. I've got a Helix. I've got, um, you know, many digital amps. Yeah. But if if I'm going to record something and, you know, I have Neve mic pre's so I can, you know, record the things properly. I know how to, I've got the cabinets. Sure. It's just as yeah. easy here to do it. Pragmatic, modern approach. Yeah. I mean, for instance, right now you've got tens of thousands of dollars worth of amps and you're plugged into this little box right and it sounds great right. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this is ac10 it's this is a great amp yeah um it's not great it's not not an expensive amp or anything but for the volumes that i play yeah. typically on my when i have to talk over it this is a great choice uh it takes pedals really well and it's um it's really handy for for doing videos, and yeah. I can't. I, it's the only amp I can move by myself, pretty much, to carry over there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like that AC30 on the on the side. Here. Those are yeah. impossible to lift up. God, even yeah. even they have the handles. They have ten sets of handles, but yeah, you still right. need two people to carry it. Right, or just throw your back out because yeah. it's with those awkward. It's so awkward. Yeah, you have to lean over, <laughs> lift with your back. It's a yeah. rock star amp, man. You're not supposed to be picking that up. No. You're totally supposed amp. to be doing yeah. that. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, but those are, you know, if I'm recording and and I go into the ISO booth, I can put that AC30 in there, play in the control room, and I can just crank the thing up, and it sounds amazing. There's yeah, nothing, nothing like it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have all these flavors. Okay, I see. You get a Sound City here. I have an old Sound City 50 there. Yeah. Custom 20 high watt. I've got uh, a bad, bad cat. cat. This bad cat really sounds great. Yep. JCM 800. Yeah, that's the early 80s. Yeah. There's that? a 71. Um, Beneath it? JMP down 71 there. JMP that I found that's dead mint. Yep. It looks like a brand new amp. It, that one there? Yeah. yeah. And um, it, does, it looks and like a reissue. It's all original. Yeah. Yep. I couldn't believe it when I saw I saw it in a store. I bought it six months ago. Wow. And I saw it, saw it in a store and I couldn't believe it wasn't brand new. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? Some new reissue JMP? I said, no, that's original 71. Yeah, he sent me pictures of it. I'm like, that's a really clean one. I said, you can't get much cleaner than that. I yeah. mean, you know, so. Hey, what is this oddball? That's a polytone. This, that's actually one of the coolest amps in here, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a solid state polytone. Yeah. It's a jazz, uh, you know, for jazz guitar. Sure. And uh, you I usually find the, yeah, the baby the brutes are yes. typically Joe yeah. Pass, people like that would play right. those. 
but a buddy of mine had that. He found it at a used uh, vintage store. It didn't have. It doesn't say Polytone anywhere on it, but it's obviously a Polytone. He could tell it, so he uh, he put a new grill on it. But yeah, it's almost like a, a almost boxy like a box. yeah. kind of yeah. grill. God, that's great. Yeah, that's a great clean amp. That's a that's a new uh, Rocker Verb three. These are great. Yeah, the the second version was not that good. The first version was excellent. Both the Rocker Verb one hundred and Rocker Verb fifty were excellent. The Mark II was not a good sound. They changed the design, did not like it at all. And the Mark III, they went back and they took most all the good stuff from the first one. This is a really, really great amp. Huh. Now you wonder how that happens, how a company, you know, to, to get a product out here, particularly a company that's, that's well-established like Orange. They've been around forever in yeah. different, you know, different incarnations, in different forms, but have been around forever. But you wonder how they, they let out something that is universally kind of not embraced. Yeah. Then that's kind of a generous way of putting it, but, but there's some things that just are not winners. And you wonder, how does it make it past everybody in R&D? And how does, how, how does somebody not say, wait a minute? Well, a lot of these companies, it's the amp, there's one guy that designs the amps. It's their and baby. Then, and, yeah, and then yeah. they, they Oh, they want to tweak or, things. Or it's guesswork. You know, a lot of times they're like, well, let's see what it does. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe you know. Now, Orange, yeah. the distribution center is about five miles from here. So I, I know all the guys at Orange. And, yeah. and uh, I used to go over there a lot when they were, they had a lot, when all the amps were coming out, the Thunder Verbs, the Rocker Verbs, when they all first came out, I would go over, they'd call me up and I'd go over and check them out and stuff. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's that's a uh, that's a beast of an amp there. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they are they are wildly efficient, and I mean, there's no I don't know. There's no heavier overdrive. Yes, it's shocking. So heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shocking. It's mastodon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It totally is. Yeah. It totally is. Yeah. Well, and there's pedals as far as the eye can see, but right now you've got just kind of a modest pedal board in front of you. Why don't we kind of Take us through, I, I, I imagine with recording, because that's what you'd, you're, you're, you're not out touring for the most part, you're in the studio, so you probably build your pedals specific to the song. Every, every song, every video I make, I have a new pedal board. Yeah. I have two different pedal boards, uh, a bigger one, if I, because this is, this is one that can only hold three pedals, pretty much. Yeah. And then I have one that'll hold, I don't know, 10 pedals or so. So let's and, talk about this one. It's the Nano Pedal Train. Yep, Nano Pedal Train. I have the Bonsai uh, Josh's JHS pedal, which is all the Tube Screamers, which I love. We reviewed that. It the, was amazing. This is a great pedal. Great really pedal. great. Uh, Keely Compressor, that's a classic. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can't go wrong Robert with that. nailed it. And the Volante, which is a... a, a um, Benson Echo Rec, um, basically copy of that, but with uh, with tap tempo. Huh. Uh, this is a really great sounding delay. All the the, the Benson Echo Recs are um, David Gilmore, Peter Frampton. Uh, the drums on when the levee breaks were all put through those. Oh, I really? asked Peter Frampton when I interviewed him. I said, "What did you use for delay?" Because his delay always sounded amazing. He yeah. said, he "Used the Benson because Dave Gilmore." Huh. Is you know he said that's what he used and he told them you should get that, and uh, and they've done a really great copy of it. I have a couple other copies pedals that copy it, um, but this one is um, is very versatile. The uh, I think it has four heads. The original Echo Rec doesn't. Yeah. Hey, do you mind drums. show us a couple of sounds out of that thing? Um, Let me get you an electric. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you, you know? We haven't seen this PRS yet. Can yeah. Let me roadie for you a few bit. <laughs> Try that. God, that thing's just so sexy. We yeah. What's up? Oh, you're in the too. telly. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Got my back towards the camera. <laughs> Thanks, Good. John. Appreciate that. Good idea. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> film work here. Very professional. <laughs> That's why. So, what is this PRS? Is, is this her new McCarty? This is uh, the 594. Um, I'm not sure how new this is, but uh, I've had it for about a year and a half or so. Is that one of their custom builds, or? Uh... Uh, I'm not sure actually, but I love the guitar. It's 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 absolutely beautiful. Yeah, they do they're, great they're, work. 
I mean, right out of the box, their things are always well set mm -hmm. up, and they um, and they sound great. And um, I don't know where they're getting their wood, but God, I did a tour of the factory. I, I interviewed Paul and did a tour of the factory, and um, it's fascinating to see how they get have their tops sitting there, and right, and and uh, they'll have four thousand guitars in production, something like that, all, all at once. Yeah. I mean, it's really impressive. And this is just um, a very, very well-made guitar. It plays great, mm -hmm. um, and it sounds great. It's got the the splitters, I guess, right? Yeah, is that yeah. Called tops, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is um, uh, I I love this guitar. So this so this uh, this Benson Echo. It's got so many different. Um, it's got so many different things it can do that uh, you can spend. It's, it's got multiple heads. It's got. Uh, oh, and then you can save in a favorite. Yes. So build the one you want. Save that for a later reference. just get any kind of tone out of this but this is i think for me these are great for lead guitar uh they sound they sound fantastic for that um and and what are you using to power this that's a um a strymon um uh, power supply profile yeah 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 it's under under the board there and and um uh so I've got that, I have that for both of my pedal boards and um, I'll typically have, usually for my videos, I'll run three pedals, three or four pedals, just so that I have as many sounds as I can. Unless I'm doing something, if I do a video with, in my What Makes a Song Great series, I try to use the, the gear that they used. Sure, that's a cool series. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like archeology. span Right. You know, yeah. So I, uh, Yes, I, I, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. Yeah, so, a, lot, a lot of the equipment you buy is for those reasons. I yeah, mean, that's that's you know, yeah. to get the right tones and the, to you know, yeah, replicate it right. You yeah. know, it's that's part of it. You know? Yeah, it, th there is something so gratifying about nailing a tone that you've heard before. Yeah, I, I and I, I don't have that gift. I'm not a particularly good mimic, you know, but but. But man, yeah, you really dial it in. It's 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 really interesting to watch. It's it's you know that that stuff is fun to me. It's fun to kind of try to match the sounds. It's yeah. really challenging. Yeah, yeah, because it's well because the gear is just part of it. Yeah, you know, it's it goes so far beyond all that. I had a video taken down. I did back mm. in black, and it was they thought it was the original. Oh really? And I went back in after it got blocked, it got taken down. So I went in, I made, added it to the video where I replayed the parts, but changed and played it a little bit. So I said, my video got taken down, so I got to play the parts a little bit sloppier. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I changed the inversions in the bass a little bit in a couple uh, spots, and uh, uh, and then I put it back up, and it stayed up. So oh, that's funny, man. I don't play it too well. <laughs> yeah. But I played. Uh, I did. Uh, I won't do it now. But I did the chords to "Highway to Hell" on a video, just trying out a guitar. Yeah. They demonetized the video immediately because huh. they they own A D over F sharp and G. You know. Oh. <laughs> They, they, oh please, <laughs> Angus! They, Angus owns those three chords. I, can't I you know, I, you know what? I got You can, you can try and, uh, you know, you can try and uh, protest it, but it's, yeah. that's a fact. He owns those chords now. Well, it's all, you know, when you've got Satan as your lawyer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever. I said, yeah. okay, fine, Angus, you can have those. Yeah, you did. Uh, you, did, yeah, you, did it. you did well with those. Yeah, uh, he earned them. He yeah. earned them. Yeah. There's, you can have those. Yeah. All right. Great. So <laughs> yeah, well, Matt, it is such a pleasure to meet you and uh, and you know take the whole tour, man. Really enjoyed it. I uh, I really appreciate you uh, coming down and hanging out in the studio here. It's uh, it's we, I don't have guests very often. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that's you know, true. Yeah, right. you guys are holed up here alone all the time. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. After, when the zombie apocalypse hits, you'll be fine. I won't even, I won't even know. <laughs> you won't even know. <laughs> right. I'll be like, putting out videos like, why is this video not getting yeah. any views? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, well, that's the other reason to have all these cabinets you just put in front of the door so it blocks everything <laughs> off. They can't get in. <laughs> we are in Atlanta, though, for the, well, you know, it's Walking true. Dead. Yeah, 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 sure. All right, till next time. Thank you. Thanks, guys.